2025 is the year of the robot lawnmower. I've tested not one, not two, but eight different robot lawnmowers so that you don't have to. Do my neighbors think I'm crazy? Yes. Do I have a small robot pending zoo? Well, yeah. So in this video, we're gonna do a deep dive of what it's like to own a robot lawnmower, what I would look for if I were to purchase one, struggles along the way, and in the end, I'll tell you what I recommend based on your situation. So let's get into it. Okay, so last year I tested two of these mowers, and then this year after CES, all of these companies decided to send me them. I only have so much yard, so I've been utilizing my neighbor's yard as well for testing. So these have been going almost daily for the past month or two. And yes, again, my neighbors think I'm crazy, but since I'm not the jack of all trades, expert of robot lawnmowers, I brought in someone that is. <laughs> hey, hey how's thanks it going? for coming out. Yeah, thank you. I'm Matt with uh, Midwest Turf Tech, and I am a dealer for most of these robots here, so. Awesome, let's jump into it. So I think the viewers want to know, what's been the evolution of the robot mower and why is this the year of the robot? The evolution of the robot lawnmower has really been, uh, originally they started with a guide wire around the yard. And uh, they started to play around with GPS, still you know, not totally accurate. So next they went to a RTK system that uh, basically kind of triangulates the GPS signal with uh, the robot lawnmower. And the next greatest thing is vision. They're using cameras, uh, usually the biocular. So they have two cameras and it can, it can see depth. Uh, the next generation now this year is it's involving AI. So it can detect, you know, different objects. Uh, it can see grass, it can see dead grass, it can see dirt, it can see your tulips. So very similar to like robot vacuums then. Right. Started with just bouncing around everywhere. Then they did the smart pass. Now they've had LiDAR yep. and then eventually AI for the recognition to you know, not run over that dog toy. But in this case, an actual dog. We don't want to run over yeah. pets. We'll so what's, what's the setup like then? You're going to download an app. Uh, there's a charging base and this is where the uh, lawnmower will dock to charge. Um, a lot of the units will have a RTK base station, and this will mount either in the ground or you can mount it on your house. Let's talk a little bit about that. So when I was setting these up, it really wanted to be away from the house, 10 feet, I think is what they recommended. Yep. Or you could put it on your roof, which I'm not doing that. <laughs> With the Yarbo, it actually required power over ethernet, but most of them were just plug-in. Uh, but what do you recommend for placement as far as, you know, being in the yard, not running over the cord, you know, landscaping. Yep. Where should where should we put this thing? I, I would recommend at least six feet from any structure. For sure, close to power. Another important thing is to be uh, in Wi-Fi range, uh, at least for updates and stuff like that. For like the RTK base station, this you're gonna want about 100 degrees of horizon. You wanna see quite a bit of the sky. So. In this situation here, I would recommend to move that antenna to another location. Okay, so we have the obstruction of the house. Yes. This tree. Yeah, yeah. that might explain a lot for testing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so one thing that I noticed when I was running some of these units is that when we got in between the house, uh, it would say the GPS signal was lost. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about why yeah. that might occur? Uh, that's really because you're losing all that horizon. Um, you're kind of basically going down a tunnel and you know, you're lucky if you do get a satellite over that strip, over that thin strip. So how would we overcome that? Do I need to just move the antenna like you said, or maybe separate zones? Probably, well, the best thing would be to ensure that if it has an RTK base station, that this has really good signal. Mm. Um, I think that's So it's more to important. do with the station than the mower itself. Yep, yep, okay. and it triangulates. So, you know, it's constantly talking. Uh, one interesting thing I've found is that if this RTK base station is like at a corner of the property, it seems like it gets better the further away. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how, you know, I don't understand it myself, but it does. Um, and then higher too helps, so. Yeah. You know, some people are putting them off on the roofs, but when you're testing eight at a time, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, there's a little battle. So some of these don't require the RTK unit. They're yep. using LiDAR and vision. Um, 
let's walk through some scenarios where maybe one might make sense over the other. Yep, yep. I would say for sure the LIDAR is really important if you have a fully treed yard or, you know, most of it is treed that this, it does not need GPS like the other units do. Um, it's basically just shooting the infrared laser out and it's measured, taking a measurement, you know, it's like, I don't know, a thousand times a second or something like that. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I was really impressed with how both this one and then the Eufy uh, were able to do auto mapping. And so you just kind of like set it out, went about its day and yeah. came back and voila. Correct me if I'm wrong, can the Segway do auto mapping as well? It can. Um, it doesn't have biocular cameras in the front. It has two cameras on both sides. So it sees 180 degrees, actually a little bit more. It's like, I don't know, two, 200 degrees or uh, 280 or something crazy. As of right now, software wise, the Eufy is going to be the best okay. at using AI to figure its location. Yeah, for that one, it was very easy. I just set the base station down, hit auto map, it did a perimeter. Yeah. Of course, I have a fenced in backyard, so that helped, but yeah. it was still able to go along like the patio and the garden beds and things. Yeah. Uh, one yeah. thing I noticed with the Dreamy in the works is that with mowers like you know, your traditional mower, you can just push through if your grass isn't completely level. But with these little guys, there was uh, some divots in our backyard and they would actually get stuck and just call for help. And so I found myself rescuing them. And then, you know, any time savings I had was just negated by the fact that I was babysitting the robots. Yes, I, I know. Um, that's kind of the evolution with these. Um, I'm starting to really believe a all wheel drive mower is gonna be best for more of the situations for people. Um, so we're talking the Luba, yep. the Sun Seeker, and then the uh, Yarbo, obviously. The Yarbo. <laughs> this thing is a freaking tank, look at this. <laughs> it is overkill. <laughs> but uh, you know, the two wheel drive ones are good. Uh, like the Segway, that one has a, tra a traction control software in it. And this one has hub motors too. So it can, it can detect when it starts to slip really good yeah. and try to work. Yesterday it. I was doing that. Uh, the grass was still a little bit wet and it, it wanted to go back. Yeah. Cause it didn't think that it could complete the job. So I thought yep. that was pretty cool. Um, obviously we don't want them to run in the rain. So yeah. a lot of them are going to have rain detection on top, which I think is smart. Yep. And then others like the Segway, they have the weather awareness. Yep. Yep. Uh, so it's, it's kind of the come same a long way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Um, the, this one it's, it is neat you know, it following the weather uh, because, you know, one problem I have with the rain sensors is the irrigation. Um, they get wet, um, you know, especially these ones with the bowls, like the Sunseeker and the uh, Luba, they stay wet for quite a while. And, you know, if it's a cooler day out, it's not going to dry. Um, hmm. and, good yeah. observation. So maybe placement too makes sense that we yes. don't want to have it out where it's yep. going to get hit by that. And then I know a lot of them make the little garages. It's like 300 bucks to have a little piece that goes over the top. I know. My solution was to just put it underneath the deck stairs. Yeah. So that worked, but. <laughs> the uh, the Segway, I have to say, has the best garage. It's got a nice little flip up latch on it so you can still access everything and, you know, clean the mower if you gotta, so. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about maintenance. It's razor blades, so it's mulching the lawn, not cutting the yard. How often should we be replacing them? How much are they? All the manufacturers recommend about every 30 days uh, to swap out the blades. There's a couple of these that will give you a warning in the app when it thinks it's time to change the blades. It kind of goes by resistance. The Dreamy and the Works are overdue. I tested them for a full season and never <laughs> replaced the blades. Uh, you can tell by the rust that's on them. So. I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, most of them did come with extra replacement blades in the box. I thought it was pretty helpful. The Sunseeker. Um, of course, he picks up the one that's I, new. I know, brand new. Well, you might as well show him a new one. <laughs> this one actually just came out recently. This is the uh, the Sunseeker uh, X7 Pro. This is a three acre model. Uh, this is the new color. Um, and you'll probably start seeing their lower models, uh, the plus and the regular three quarter acre and showing up in this color next year. So, but yeah, it's, it's a, this one has a floating deck that's just like a zero turn mower where it's going to um, kind of float over and won't sculpt the grass as much. Um, and then it, 
it raises and lowers kind of like a zero turn two. It, it actually uses pulleys instead of a motorized um, actuator to move it up and down. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty simple. The blades, it's just a Phillips screw on most of them. And uh, you know, once a month, change them out. And so in general, I'm hearing that you get what you pay for, yes. similar to robot vacuums, yep. that we want good navigation, whether right. it's RTK, Vision, LiDAR, we want to have a floating deck, a wide cutting base, yep. and enough uh, sized appropriately for your yard. So if you have a larger yard, you want to get a bigger unit, obviously. Yep. Otherwise, yep. it's going to run constantly. I have to go back and charge and then go out again. Yep. Uh, so my yard is pretty small. These all have been more than enough, <laughs> arguably overkill. Uh, but yeah, that's something I would definitely think about. So who's the ideal customer then? So uh, someone that doesn't have time to mow. Uh, someone that, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how it is for me They're too. They're lazy, that's me. <laughs> someone that uh, is already hiring a service. For me, the cost of one of these sun seekers, it paid for in one year. Um, I was paying this a year for lawn care service and all I had to do now is I just have to trim. If you're, you're not able to mow the grass either, you're like yeah. a vacation home or something like that would be Makes another sense. one. So. I love green grass. I love, I'm a lawn care nut. I just, I love perfect grass. And I would have to say the Sun Seeker out of all of them has the best quality cut. You know, if you just are general, you want it to get to mow, um, you know, all the other ones do a great job at it. Oh, uh, the other thing I was gonna talk about is trimming. The Navi Mow has a, has a, is a module expansion here. And they're gonna, they have a, um, trimmer coming out and same with Yarbo. Yarbo does have a trimmer on there. It's in beta currently. Yes. Some of the influencers have received them already. I have not. Yarbo, let's get at this. Uh, but yeah, that's <laughs> been a big challenge is that obviously you can't get right up to the fence line. We got a two inch gap, give or take on between the blades yep. and the edge for safety. So we're doing a little bit more edging than we normally would, which for a lazy guy like myself, that can be problematic. But. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I really appreciate you yeah. uh, taking time to educate our viewers. Yeah, no, You thank are a you. national dealer. So if yes. someone's interested and they have more questions, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, visit uh, MidwestTurfTech.com uh, or you can call us 952-698-7676. Uh, um, also, we're listed on all of these uh, manufacturers, you know, they, you can find us, our contact info on there. So we're located in Burnsville, Minnesota. All right, well, I think my wife is ready for me to be done with this testing. I'm ready to get these out of my front yard. But first, what are my recommendations overall? Let's start with last year's models. So the Dreamy and the Landroid Vision, I think they were great if you had a flat yard. I had some challenges with them getting stuck. I do think that the LiDAR was better than the Vision and they both struggled with hills. Fast forward to this year, the first one I started testing was the Luba 2. I was super impressed with its all-wheel drive. It handled the hills with no issues. It was able to do uneven terrain. Overall, did a great job. Then of course, all the manufacturers started reaching out and we got all these bad boys. Uh, it's gonna be hard to say who my favorites are, but I think as far as features go, I really like the GOAT it had a lot of uh, really good navigation. It didn't require like assistance to get to when it got trapped or anything. I still need more time with the Segway. I really want to test the trimmer attachment because like I said, uh, without that, that gap is like two inches. And so it does leave a lot of extra uh, trimming to do, which is a pain. And for my use case, I think the Yarbo is a little bit of an overkill. I mean, this is a big unit. And so with a smaller yard like mine, I don't know that I need something this big. I do have a fun clip of it pulling me around and, and that's neat and I do love it for the winter. I'll put a link to that video right here. Uh, but I did do individual reviews on each of these units. So if you wanna check them out, we'll put that link right here as well. So I really think that a robot mower is worthwhile if you're a type of person that either doesn't have the time, uh, you get home and it's like the last thing that you wanna do. I think any of these are gonna work for you. They're pretty turnkey, easy to set up. Like Matt said earlier though, if you have a house with a bunch of trees, definitely go for something with vision or like not reliant on RTK. This 
base station is pretty easy to get set up, but if you have obstructions, you're gonna run into a lot of challenges that can be frustrating. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'd say this has saved me probably an hour a week. And if I was to hire it out, it'd probably be a couple hundred bucks a month. And so that really has added up. I think within a couple of years, you know, this will have paid for itself. Um, it's more reliable than the neighbor kid. He went and got like a summer job and then went back to school and stuff. Like who does that? Uh, my lawn is so important. Like this should be priority number one. Uh, these guys haven't quit on me yet. So kudos to them. But until next time, take care.